the day has finally come. We are setting up my bullet journal for 2020. And if you want to see how I did that, then let's get into it. Okay, so if you're very, very new to my channel and this is the first video that you're watching, then you have to know that I'm setting up my bullet journal digitally on the iPad with the help of the GoodNotes app. So in case you're wondering why is there an iPad and not a physical book in front of me, but it's basically the same because I'm using my Apple Pencil and I'm using my own handwriting and my own illustrations, so not really much of a difference. I'm just planning on the iPad instead of on a physical book, if that makes sense. But yeah, the first thing that I did was just to import a brand new bullet journal. Of course, I'm using my own so I can start fresh. And the first thing that I do is to change out the covers because when you import my bullet journal, it comes by default with a black cover, but you also have the option to change out the covers with something more colorful. So that's what I'm doing right here. So these are the cover options that you have when you purchase this bullet journal and I decided to use this leaf cover because I used the cloud cover for my 2019 bullet journal and I thought that would be a nice change of scenery. And now I'm just rearranging the covers in the layout section. Of course I want the front cover in the front and the back cover in the back and once we have that done we can finally start planning. All right, now we can finally get into it and we're starting off with the first page and this page is pretty important for me because it is a page that you can always access from any point of the bullet journal wherever you are with the help of the hyperlink in the top left corner. So even if you're in July or in August, you can always tap on that hyperlink in the corner and it will lead you to that page. So I was kind of thinking, okay, what can I put in there that I would need to access all the time? And the answer for me was a grid spacing cheat sheet. <laughs> it's something that I feel like would help me a lot in the future because whenever I set up my months or my weeks, I always have to count those dots. I always forget how many are there again. How am I going to divide those up so everything looks nice and even so that every time that I'm setting up a new month, I can just hop on over there and take a peek how many dots I need for my layout. And I know that some people like to have motivational quotes in the beginning of the bullet journal. I'm personally not a motivational quote kind of person. I feel like they're inspiring in the moment maybe, but they don't really have a long-term effect on me. So I was kind of ditching that idea. And because this first page is linked, I just wanted to make sure to use it as best as possible. And then throughout this entire video and throughout this entire setup, I am actually just going to use one single sticker and then the rest is just my handwriting. So I wanted to keep it very, very neutral, just blacks and whites and grays. And then whenever we get into those months, we're going to bring back all the color. Don't worry. But for just this first part of the bullet journal, I wanted to keep it as neutral as possible. So I'm just using this one black and white banner sticker for my basic set. And I use that for all of the headers and that's it. All right, so now that the first page is done, we can move on to the next page, which is actually the first page of the first official section, the first section that is accessible through the top tabs, if that makes sense. And for that, I wanted to keep it very classic, very simple, something that everybody has in their bullet journal, I think, which is a year at a glance. So basically, I'm just writing out all of the numbers for each and every month, and that's a process that takes quite some time. So put on a TV show or an audiobook or something in the background while you're doing this, because I think I probably spend like 30 to 45 minutes writing out these numbers and making sure that everything is nice and set. And I'm starting off pretty big as you can see. I just wanted to make sure that everything is nice and even, that all of the months are the same size, but later on when everything is set out, I size them down and I spread them out nicely so it doesn't look too busy. Another thing that I want to mention is when I imported the bullet journal, I made sure to use the GoodNotes file because the GoodNotes file already has the tab labels in it. So all of the January, February, March, and so on is already labeled for me. So I'm saving a lot of time doing that. But the only thing that is not labeled out to my liking, of course, are the top tabs. And that really just depends on what you want to put in your bullet journal, what kind of sections you want at the beginning. So right now, of course, I have them numbered from one to six in Roman letters. But later on, you will see that I'm actually going in and edit all of these top tabs. And usually I would say do that in the beginning before you do anything because you have to copy and paste them to each and every page. But because I'm not using all of the pages for the first couple sections, I will delete a couple of pages out and then I'm editing the tab labels. And I know this is kind of confusing, but it will make sense in a couple of minutes when I do that because I'm saving a lot of time and I'm not doing work that I'm going to delete out later. So yeah, just stay with me. It'll make sense, as I said. But for now, I'm just trying to make sure to spread out all these months, get them even so it's nice to look at.
Okay, so now that we have the first section done, we can move on to the second section. And for this one, I wanted to keep it very simple. There's not much illustration or design going on there because I wanted to use that for a bucket list and also a goals list for 2020. So on the left side, I wanted to list all of the things that I would want to have accomplished by the end of my life. I know this sounds very dramatic, but I feel like it's just kind of like a fun way of where you see your life going. And everybody just has different things on their bucket list. Um, I can tell you for sure that I do not want to jump out of a plane. This is not something that's on my bucket list and most likely I'm not going to check off each and every item by the end of the year. I think I will carry this over to the next bullet journal and so on. And probably as the years go on, I will add more stuff. And then on the right side, I wanted to use this list just for 2020. So all of the goals that I would want to have accomplished by the end of the year. Um, and this is more specific and more short term related, of course. And I'm also for the first time, I thought, you know, let's switch it up a little bit. I haven't done it before. Why not add some drop shadow? So I'm creating this black drop shadow, filling it in, making it look like it's it's a little bit more dimensional than just a simple list, if that makes sense. So yeah, just wanted to switch it up. Okay, so moving on to the third section, this one is a really, really fun one and something that I haven't done before. And this is going to be kind of like an entertainment section. So on the one side, I'm going to list throughout the year all of the shows that I have not watched, but that I have loved. And I feel like that would be really interesting at the end of the year to see how many shows I've actually watched and loved, but also what I'm kind of into. And then on the other side, I wanted to list all of the books that I have read. And this is something that is definitely on my goals list this coming year. I definitely want to read more. I never really seem to find time for that, but I want to make more time for it. So this is a big part that I would want to change in 2020. I've already started it, of course, making it a habit to read every single day. But then whenever you finish a book and you have the ability to put it into that list, I think that will be a fun way to track that. But yeah, as for the design, I didn't want to just make a list and put in all these bullet points that I can fill. I wanted a little bit of fun illustration. So for the TV shows, of course, I decided to draw somewhat of a TV, at least what GoodNotes allowed me to draw with drop shadow, of course. And then whenever I finish the show or I know I've loved a show, I can write that into that TV. And then as you will see in a minute for the books part, and you've probably seen it before, it's a very common way to show all the books that you've read. I wanted to draw out a bookshelf and this took me forever you will see it not only by coloring in that shelf but also just drawing every single book in good notes and not anywhere else it's not enjoyable so what i'm trying to say is if you want to have nice drawings and you want to have fun with it then i would suggest you jump over to a drawing app like procreate for instance and then import that picture into your good notes file i just wanted to prove to myself that i can do everything in good notes which you will see i did manage to do everything in good notes but it was not fun to draw out the end result was amazing i think and it is definitely doable if you don't want to spend the money on Procreate, even though there are some free drawing apps, of course, as well, but you can definitely do it in good notes. So now I'm going in and I'm filling this bookshelf with all of the books. And the idea behind it is that every time that I finish a book, I can write it onto one of these empty ones. And then hopefully by the end of the year, the bookshelf is full. But as you can see, as I'm trying to draw these books, I had quite a bit of issues with it and it took me forever. I got it done eventually. But the GoodNotes pen is very, very sensitive. So if you want to draw out anything, my lines, for instance, get so wonky, it just does not look good at all. So what I'm doing is just turning on the drawing assist so that every line that I'm creating is straight, but sometimes they're not parallel, which is what you want when you draw a book. So I'm just really struggling here. In hindsight, I should have gone over to Procreate and do it over there, but I feel like my pride was just too big in that moment. I wanted to make it work. <laughs> so for something simple like this, it definitely works. And because I wanted to keep it very simple and somewhat minimal, at least when it comes to the colors and shapes, it was manageable.
So this is what the bookshelf looks like. I put in some decor items so it doesn't look too empty and then we can move on to the fourth section. And for this one, I wanted to use that for all of the places that I have been in 2020. So this will be filled up during the year. We have a couple of trips planned so I think this would also be a very fun way to insert some photos maybe, maybe a little bit of an anecdote or something. And then looking back at the end of the year, I think that will be kind of cool. And let me tell you, these drop shadows made good notes sweat so much. Whenever I copied and pasted one of these boxes with drop shadow, it took a couple of seconds for it to process. And then copying, pasting all four of them, I feel like I sat there for like 20 seconds straight. So good notes had to do a lot of work, but I feel like it was worth it. Okay, moving on to section number what is it five i think it's five yeah um i wanted to dedicate that section to 2020 in pictures i found that idea somewhere i i think it was amanda rachel lee but i'm not entirely sure and i thought this would be really a fun way to go back after every month and just picking one picture that kind of like summed up that month or that was a highlight or even like a sadness or something in a month and putting it on that page so i'm kind of drawing out these polaroid pictures that of course will be filled with photos later on but again kind of a simple layout but still with drop shadow of course And then lastly, for this last section, before we start with January, I wanted to have a review page or more like two review pages, but this is a section that will be filled at the very end of 2020. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do that. That's why I wanted to keep it somewhat empty, no bullet points or dividing it up into areas. I might just dump everything on there, but I also didn't want to leave the whole page completely empty and just have the header on it. So that's why I made this frame with drop shadow. So it looks more dimensional and like something that I actually set up. So with that being done, it is now time to go back into the layout and delete out all of the pages that I didn't use in those first six sections because every section by default comes with three double pages and most of the time I just use the first page. So I'm deleting out all the empty ones and then I can go back and do the tab labeling. So right now I'm on the first page and all of these tab labels are text items in GoodNotes and if you want to edit them then I would suggest that you take them off of the labels because all of these labels are also hyperlinked and sometimes it's hard to edit the text if it's on top of a link. So just lasso them, take them off of the labels and then you can go back and edit them. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just labeling all of the sections that I had just finished and then I can use all six text items, copy them and pasting them onto every single page. And I know this is very, very tedious and very stupid of good notes that they didn't synchronize them over every page but this is unfortunately how it is so I'm copying all of them I'm pasting them onto each and every page of course move them over whenever the section is done I mean that's how the planner works and then you have to do that for all 50 pages it's really really stupid but the good thing is that you do it once and then you don't do it again so you set it up at the beginning of the year and then later on if you want to duplicate pages then the tab labels are already there so take your time go through setting them up up and then you're done. One good thing, and this is exactly why I imported the GoodNotes file and not the PDF file, is that the month tabs are already done. So I don't have to worry about those. It's really just those six sections at the beginning or those top labels that just really depend on what you're looking for, what you want to put in your planner. So that's why everybody has to do it for their own.
But now we're at the end of this video, everything is set up just like I wanted and I can give you a quick flip through if you've missed anything. So this is my first six sections, the essential part of my bullet journal that applies to the year overall and not necessarily to a single month. And I'm really, really excited to fill this throughout the year. Of course, my January plan with me will come next week. I wanted to keep that video separate, but you will also see a lot of changes or something that I haven't done before. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's always fun to start a fresh new planner. It's always like a new year, new beginning. So I really hope that I can make the best use out of it.